I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and that is the best car that Volkswagen make. Hang on, isn't that a claim that I made two years ago about the Passat 206 TSI? Well, it is, and it still is. The Passat is a phenomenal Volkswagen. It's a cut above the regular fare from a brand that usually gets things quite right. And compared to a Golf or a Tiguan, you can immediately tell when you get into a Passat that you're sitting in a higher grade Volkswagen, a vehicle that's more like an Audi than a run of the mill VW. And that couldn't be more true of the 206 TSI version of the Passat. It's running a 206 kilowatt tune of Volkswagen's famed EA888 two liter turbocharged engine. It's got all wheel drive. And as you can see, it's styled a little bit like a Golf R wagon, another great Volkswagen. This isn't a full fat R product. It's only an R line. But as I'll show you in today's video, this vehicle better than any other Volkswagen combines what this brand is good at. Quiet and subtle performance, refinement, quality, at a price which is not completely outrageous. This will set you back just over 70 grand drive away. That's relatively expensive for a Volkswagen. But when you see what this car is capable of on virtually any road from your commute to a country back road to a highway road trip, that amount of money suddenly makes a lot of sense. Well, in this video, we're going to check out the interior, the back seat and the boot, discuss the running cost of the Passat 206 TSI, and then take a very drive in this sporty station wagon to see just why this car is so good. Not sponsored, not commercial, not Volkswagen marketing, just our honest, independent assessment of a great wagon. Before we get started, hit subscribe below. Chasing Cars, honest reviews of your next car. Brought to you by Budget Direct. There has been a lot of complaining in recent years about the direction of Volkswagen's interiors, some of which has been justified, but if what you're after is a traditional, super high quality Volkswagen interior with easy to use technology, then look no further than the 2023 Passat, because one of this car's best parts is that it has been left about a generation behind in terms of its cabin. So what we're left here with is a design which some would uncharitably call slightly dated, but to be generous, everything is in the right place, everything works properly, and even though the Passat doesn't have the latest and greatest Volkswagen interior, in many ways, I actually think it's better to live with every day. So what do we have here? Well, we have a technology package which is skewed perspectively, that's one thing that isn't so good, but we have a 9.2 inch touchscreen down here, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, built-in navigation, Bluetooth audio, all of that stuff as you would expect. And then up here in front of us, we have a 10 inch digital instrument cluster, which is fully configurable. You can put a map there, music, trip computer, all that stuff. Newer Volkswagens have located the screens on the same plane, which I think is better from an ergonomics perspective, but this still works absolutely fine. Then we have a beautiful leather and perforated paddle shifted steering wheel. But unlike so many current Volkswagens and especially flagship Volkswagens, it doesn't have the soft touch buttons. Instead, it has hardware buttons. Hallelujah. It's almost like this is a little cheat code car for people that really know their Volkswagens. They want one of the best driving VWs, one of the best looking VWs, one of the nicest VWs, but you still get what Volkswagen would call their lower end steering wheel with physical buttons. It, it's just great. Sorry, just nerding out over here for a second. In terms of the rest of the appearance of the interior, the 206 TSI is only available as an R-line, which means we have black leather as the only option. That's a little bit of a black mark. At the moment, we're coming into winter, so that's fine. In summer, this is gonna be a more toasty cabin. We've got this sort of carbon effect on the seats. That's a little naff. I wish that wasn't there. And the seats are only heated, not cooled. Oddly, if you step down to the front wheel drive Passat 162 TSI Elegance, the sort of luxury spec, you can A, pick a beige interior, which looks great, and it has cooled seats as standard. It's weird that Volkswagen didn't apply that to the R-Line, but I'd still be willing to live with that as a trade-off. In terms of quality, wow, it's good. It's like the old days of Volkswagen. Everything you touch, even the secondary stuff, like this strip here, this bit where your leg rests, it is all soft touch, squidgy, Audi level stuff in here, beyond a lot of Audis actually, in terms of quality. Storage is good, big cup holders. The classic adjustable Volkswagen armrest here with USB-C ports. Tray ahead of the shifter. No wireless charging does age the car a bit. Plus we have flock line door bins. We've got a fleece line glove box. All these things we used to take for granted from Volkswagen, which is a nice way to finish off a family wagon.
Here in the back of the Passat, it's pretty obvious that this is a big car that's gonna be suitable for families who have taller teenagers, longer leg teenagers, or of course, if you need to carry adults in the back on a regular basis, this will be fine. You don't have to go to an SUV just to get a bigger car, though of course the Passat wagon can't help you if you really do need a third row. Volkswagen can't really help you in that regard. They do have a Tiguan Allspace. The third row is very, very tight. You're gonna to wanna to go to something like a Skoda Kodiak if you need more space than a car like this. But what we do have here is a spacious cabin for five people. For myself at six foot, headroom, even below this optional sunroof is good. Legroom is excellent, tow room is perfect. You can really stretch out. This is a lovely road trip car assisted by the fitment of these integrated sun blinds, soft materials here in the back, flip down armrest with two and a half cup holders, air vents, separate climate zone. It is nice back here. Plus you get another big bottle holder in the door, map pockets. Volkswagen has a modular system of like tablet holders and jacket holders and stuff which clip onto the back of the front headrest. Plus we've got this sort of stuff up here. If you've been wondering what this is, this is actually a little clip so you can put up the net which comes with the car here. So if you've got a big dog or something like that, you can fold down these seats and the dog isn't gonna be able to get up front. You can also fit cages and stuff like that. Partially reflecting the fact that the Passat is an increasingly popular vehicle with emergency services. That's always been the case in Europe. Aussie police forces are only now cottoning onto how good this car is for heavy duty use. So if it's good enough for them, then it's gonna be good enough for whatever you and your family can throw at this car. Moving around the back of the Passat, before we open up the boot, I wanna comment on the design and styling of this wagon. It is a reasonably big car. You can tell that from looking at it in profile, but it's not especially wide. So if you have a narrower garage, it could well fit just fine. Now, even though this is the R-Line, the 206 TSI top of the line version, you still get what I consider to be an elegant mix of body color, some blacked out performance bits, but also a fair bit of matte aluminum and chrome. And I think it all creates a nice contrast on this car. This one is finished in lapis blue, which is that classic R color kind of evoking very much the appearance of a Golf R wagon. But this vehicle is a larger class and it's also considerably more refined and luxurious than a Golf wagon in many ways. Coming around the back here, we have the facelift Passat tail lights. They look very smart. We don't have something like a full width light bar. And that's one thing that I actually think makes this car look more classy and more elegant. That trend is already overdone in my opinion. We've got Passat spelt out in the center here. No R-line badge around the back. You've just got to know. It does say full motion for the all wheel drive system. And although the facelift Passat, it looks like it has quad pipes. They're closed off, sadly. This car has a twin exhaust system. For many years, it did actually have four real exhaust pipes down below that's now been reduced to two. Now you open the boot with this clever little badge trick. The power door opens up and reveals 650 liters of space. You've got a trick cargo blind, which you can just push twice to retract. Space off to the left and right of the boot hooks. The ability to remotely drop those back seats from right here in the boot, very convenient. And you've also got under here, a full size spare wheel, which is one of the best parts of the Passat in terms of peace of mind. And of course the subwoofer for this car's premium audio system. Up here, we've got controls to lower the boot. And you've also got one next to it where you've got lowering the boot and automatic locking as the car senses that you're walking away. When it comes to running costs for the Passat 206 TSI, it starts with fuel consumption. And in town, it's a little on the thirsty side. I was able to achieve 11 liters per 100 Ks in my commute. But on the highway, it settles right down to about seven liters per 100 K. So you're gonna look at those sort of high single digits from a combined point of view. Personally, I think that's just about acceptable. When it comes to servicing, you can buy a five year care plan for this car, which saves money compared to buying servicing every year. It's gonna set you back $3,100 for the Passat 206 TSI for five years and 75,000 Ks. Again, not the cheapest, not the most expensive, just about acceptable. The warranty is five years with unlimited kilometers, something that has improved over the life of this Volkswagen Passat generation. And when it comes to insurance in the last 12 months, the median budget direct customer spent $1,151 to comprehensively insure a new Volkswagen Passat. Everybody's situation varies and your premium will vary based on things insurers take into account, like where you live, how you garage the car and your driving history. Okay, so just as a bit of a shower has started to fall here at the Chasing Cars test track, Let's go for a drive in the Passat 206 TSI, because of course, one of the great things about this car is that it is such a competent 
all-weather vehicle. It has standard all-wheel drive, it's got reasonably good grip, but it still has a fun chassis, which means you're gonna be able to have an entertaining drive, whether it's dry or it becomes a little bit moist like it is today. So let's talk about the underpinnings of this vehicle because while they are common to a lot of Volkswagens, the Passat kind of has its own way thanks to a stretched wheelbase. It's a much bigger car than a lot of vehicles that are also on this MQB platform that underpins everything from a Golf all the way up to, I think the biggest is probably the Atlas SUV in the US and the Passat is kind of on that end, although a very much stretched version. To say all cars on MQB are the same would be quite erroneous. It's really only to do with what's going on kind of around that front axle area. That's the main area of commonality, um, not a lot else. So we're on the MQB platform here, nice, stiff, rigid platform. And in terms of the engine, it's a Perla. We've got the EA888 two litre turbo, like so many Volkswagen, Skodas, Audis, etc. Porsches even, the base Macan. But here we're running a nice balanced tune, the 206 kilowatt tune. I've got the horsepower up on the screen for you there. This is what the Golf R had in uh, launch, guys, as a Mark 7. So, you know, you could kind of think of it as an old Golf R tune if you like, but what it is is just sufficient power for a vehicle of this size and weight. The Passat 206 TSI R line is a quick car off the line. I've put our independent performance testing figures on screen for you here, but it's the way that it deploys its power day to day that is so beguiling. It's just always quick. It's always got something in reserve, whether you need to overtake really quite rapidly on a country road, or you just are sort of dipping in and out of gaps in your commute. This car has got what it takes from a performance side. It also has excellent brakes, plus, it just has this sense about it where it gets smaller around you. To look at the Passat outside, it looks like a big car for sure. But once you're driving it, it feels like a segment or two segments smaller in terms of its dimensions. It just fits you like a glove. It's one of these kind of rare intuitive driver's cars that strings corner to corner together in a way that just feels natural. It's a car that you look for reasons to drive it, which is definitely not always the case. And it's often not the case with midsize and large SUVs, which a lot of Australian families have, for some good reasons, moved their business to. The Passat wagon reminds you of why traditional family cars like station wagons are so great because they offer the driver real engagement and enjoyment while still having so much space as we just looked at in the back seat and in the boot for people, for your stuff. This is a proper all-rounder car, but not enough people buy them. And that's why Volkswagen Australia is saying, okay, well, not enough people are buying this car, so why would we bring the Passat back in next generation form? Why would we bring the ID7 and ID7 wagon to Australia when Australians don't seem to be interested in this car? And I just wish that they would be because there is so much to enjoy. If I was gonna criticize a couple of things, it could probably have a sportier exhaust note. It's definitely tuned to have more of a luxury comfort sort of exhaust note. You know, it's kind of rorty, it kind of sounds half decent when you're getting up it, but you know, you, there's no crackles or pops like you get in a Golf R wagon. Of course, you could go and take care of that aftermarket because there's everything, all the fundamentals here in terms of engine to be making those sounds through the exhaust. Other criticisms, there are very, very few. Um, we have an adaptively damped suspension here, which somehow manages to combine absolutely superb body control with real compliance. This car is plush, but not soft or sickly over bumps while commuting. It's a really comfy car to commute in, but yet it holds it all together on a country road really well. What it doesn't have is that last degree of composure when you are seriously pushing on hard, which you're gonna get from a Golf R wagon. A Golf R wagon is ultimately gonna be able to do more than this car, and it has that additional flexibility from the proper new R-grade all-wheel drive system, which uh, allows you to power oversteer much more easily thanks to the twin clutch rear differential. You don't get that on the Passat R-line. This car isn't about drifting under power. I have driven, a Passat wagon all-wheel drive on the ice fields in Queenstown, and it absolutely will oversteer on slippery surfaces, but on the road, it's not gonna be doing things like that. Instead, it's about traction, it's about making quick progress, it's about good handling, it's about security. And I think that's what a lot of people are looking for from a sporty, but ultimately sensible wagon like this. 
There's a little bit more road noise than you might expect in this car on a course chip road. Maybe it could be like just a couple of decibels quieter, but once again, I'm clutching at straws. When it comes to safety, it's well prepared. It's got Volkswagen's full IQ assist system, including stuff you can't get on Tiguan right now, like blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. You've got all of that stuff here in the Passat wagon. You've got rear AEB, forwards AEB, junction AEB, smooth adaptive cruise control, good lane centering. This car is properly prepared from a safety perspective, plus a clear 360 degree camera to help you park the thing as well. So as an all-rounder, as a car to enjoy on your commute every day, a car to find a great back road in, a car to road trip in, they don't come much better than the Passat 206 TSI wagon, which is why I find this car so easy to recommend. Like I said at the start of this video, the 2023 Passat 206 TSI is the best car in Volkswagen's Australian range. And of course, you can disagree with me down below in the comments and I'm willing to uh, duke it out down there. But the reasons to me are clear. This is a fast car. It's a capable, quick, quasi-performance car, but it's also one that has an expensive and sophisticated suspension that allows it to be comfortable, cosseting, controlled, compliant virtually all the time. This is a luxury grade station wagon at a more Volkswagen-y price than something from Audi or especially BMW with what they're now charging for the 330i Touring. This car is a bargain with the depth of engineering available at this particular price tag. We know there is a dark cloud over the future of the Passat here in Australia. It may or may not return for another generation. Volkswagen Australia are not taking the ID7 large electric car, at least not for now. So if you want a big wagon Volkswagen that's a really great car, this might be one of the last years that you can actually get something like this. So I'd hurry to get an order in. Now let me know what you think down below in the comments. While you're there, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell. And as always, thanks for watching Chasing Cars.